you came early to the meeting. Is it? Yes? Yes. yes. Warm welcome to Bangalore Toastmasters Club. A smile can give a crown, a crown, said by William Shakespeare. Please greet everyone with a smile. That makes the surrounding beautiful. This is Kolapan, Sergeant at Arms. I switch off my cell phone while going to any meeting. It avoids disturbance, requesting everyone to do the same. I give 10 seconds for that. Please don't walk in the middle. Move only when you hear applause. Please don't hurt others' feelings by talking about sex, religion, and politics. After the second lockdown, my company has major issues like labors and get, uh, getting them to the Bangalore. They are, they are, it is a big problem. They are, it's happened to be in Bangalore after uh, opening of the lockdown. Me and my boss were thinking how to bring the labels. I called, I took my cell phone and phone called every labels whom I know who work in our company. Somebody, some, some of them picked the call and they told, I can't come to a company if you change your payment system. Normally in construction companies, uh, companies uh, hold the labor payment for 10 days and then they release after a while they are going to their native. But in my case, our company holds 15 days of payment and don't release their payment because my boss thought that they won't return. If we release the payment, they won't come, they will ship to other companies. This is the problem because, uh, happening for long days. Because of this, we, uh, we are unable to get into new product, uh, uh, projects and there are many new projects or in the uh, projects are in the pipeline. Uh, as the team made no goals about it, I went directly to my boss and uh, explained the situation with no excitations. After some time, we uh, got into some conclusion and then uh, solutions from that. If you want to try new things or get a solution, go directly to the concerned person and then speak about it. There is no point in holding it. Let me introduce a person who is a trainer by profession. He loves to ride bike in this normal no traffic days. And he is one of the youngest president of Bangalore Toastmasters Club. Please help me in welcoming president of our club, Toastmaster Sashank. Thank you, Toastmaster Kolapan, for the lovely introduction. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm very happy to see all of you today, considering the fact that it was a long weekend you still made it a point to attend this meeting. So thank you all once again for that. I now call to order meeting number 1396 of Bangalore Toastmasters Club. <laughs> the minutes of the previous meeting, 1395, was shared with all the members over WhatsApp and mail by our secretary, Toastmaster Suhas. Are there any amendments to the same? No. Not? I pass the minutes of meeting number 1395 of Bangalore Toastmasters Club. Do we have any first time guests amongst us today? Can you please stand and introduce yourself? Also tell us how to get to know about the club. Oh yeah, thank you. So uh, my name is Anish Joseph. Uh, I'm in my first year of undergrad at St. Joseph University. Uh, I'm now doing BA in international relations and affairs. And uh, I heard about this uh, course from my dad and he told me to come to company. Welcome. Yes. Uh, my name is uh, Akshin Joseph. I am also in my first year of undergraduate at St. Joseph University. I also heard about, uh, I mainly heard about those courses from my dad and online members. Are you good friends? Yeah, they are very good. 
Yes, yeah, please, please. Hi, uh, my name is Rajul Krishna Prasad. Uh, I'm a management consultant by profession. Uh, my boss and mentor recommended that I uh, explore a Toastmasters club and I happened to look up the Toastmasters on Google and then one. You happen to be in the right place. <laughs> Anyone else? First time yeah. yeah. My name is Aniket. I'm a software developer. So I just wanted to make new friends and meet new people and improve my con uh, communication skills. So that's why I joined this. So I found yeah. this through this app called Meetup. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anyone else? Yeah, please. Hi, myself Hazefa. Uh, I work uh, as an investment banker where we help startups raise funding. Uh, I got to know about Toastmasters from my peers. Uh, uh, and I wanted to work on my communication skills. And that's why I'm here. Members, how do you make our guest to the club? <laughs> a quick tip before we move ahead. I know the Premier is here with us today, but when you're introducing ourselves to others, preferably say I am or my name is, let us avoid using myself. That's not the right term to use. Just because we are a public speaking platform, we have a Premier Inus to do the job and just taking stealing his spotlight for a couple of minutes. With that, let me share a small incident which happened in my life, which changed the way how I thought. I was working as an article or an intern in a CA firm. It's a 60-year-old firm. And as an intern, you simply go do the job and come back. But there was a client who was into some financial irregularities. Was, they were doing some financial irregularities. When we approached them for the assignment, Actually, they approached us for the assignment. We agreed, we started the work. Then they realized the previous auditor had left, had discontinued their service because of a serious fraud. That's the reason they discontinued the operations. They came to us asking for the assignment. And we said, OK, we didn't know much about them. When we started auditing their books of accounts, we got to know that they are into some serious irregularity. And when we spoke to them, Guess what they said? It's okay, it happens, everyone does it. <laughs> we said, okay, let us discuss with the, our bosses and get back to you. When we spoke to our boss, he told one thing. He asked me one thing, in fact. Do you want to land in jail? I said, no, of course not. Then say no. I asked him what happened. He said, if you say yes to him today, you most probably will land up in jail tomorrow, considering the seriousness of that issue. We, do you want to go to jail for no reason? No. I went and spoke to him, to the client, on his face, told him, no, we can't do this. So no, I'll look at someone else then. I said, okay, I'll give you a tip. That's how most of the clients threaten the auditors. You do this, you keep the assignment. If not, you are out, I'll look at someone else. And if you are not stable, if you don't have the confidence in your work, you will succumb to their demands. But we did not. We said no. We discontinued the assignment. Whatever work we did, we didn't even bill it to them. We just walked away from the building. Guess what? The next auditor who took up the job, what did he do? He said yes. He said, okay, this year we'll see, but next year don't do this. After one year, we got to know that the partner who signed the financial statements, his membership was suspended by the CA Institute because of negligence. Now, we, imagine, I or my partner would have been in that spot. Because we spoke up, we were safe. What can I take away from that? The lesson I learned from that. If you say no to someone, or if you are straight, if you put facts on the face, they may feel bad temporarily. Short term loss, but there will be long term gains. How is it applicable to Toastmasters? Dr. Ral C. Smedley, who started the Toastmasters movement, he started his career as a trainer at YMCA. And while he was at YMCA, he came across so many people who could not speak up. He went and spoke to the directors of YMCA. They told him, we are a religious organization, we are an ethical organization, we can't deal with this. What did he do? He made up his mind, he fixed his mind, he started Toastmasters movement. And in 1924, the 
first Toastmasters club was up and running. How is it applicable to us and this club? We are here for a reason, to improve where we are, we are lacking, yes? And if we know the reason why we are here, should we address the fact or should we keep quiet? We should address it. How better to address it than coming on stage regularly and taking stage time? That is the reason, as I reiterated this point a couple of weeks back, we want you to take part in table topics. You are here, you come on stage as well. I know the table topic master sent out a message saying that I am table topic master, please reach out to me. But if you are here, we make it a point for you to come on stage and speak up to improve. Because more than you getting your money's worth, we want you to get your money's worth. Because it's not about only us. It's about all of us. Together, we evolve. Having said that, the next person to come on stage, the Toastmaster of the day, or the Master of Ceremonies, since her college days, she was an environmentalist. She was part of a lot of Go Green campaigns as well. I asked her if she is continuing to do so. She said, not quite, but that should come from within the contribution towards nature, right? From what I have seen about the Toastmaster of the day, she was once a surgeon at arms, one, one and a half years ago, but she was an active member of the VPE subcommittee when I was the VP education the last term, and she is currently the part of VP membership sub subcommittee as well, doing a great job, a thankless job. Please put your hands together to welcome the Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster, Chaitra Chandapillai. Thank you for the lovely introduction, Toastmaster Shashank. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Good evening. In 1939, just as World War II was starting, scientists discovered this miracle compound. During World War II, it gained widespread usage because governments wanted to get rid of mosquitoes that were killing so many soldiers and civilians as well. After the war, it began to be used in agriculture and everyone was very happy with it. Farmers considered it a boon. You know why? Because other pesticides killed one or two kinds of insects, while this killed a large number of insects. Dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane. Any guesses on what we know it as? DDT. Yes. DDT. We know better now. We're not like the people from World War II days. Now this young marine biologist named Rachel Carson noticed that DDT was behind the cause the deaths of a lot of fish and birds as well. She began to approach authorities and try to spread awareness about it. But that didn't work. Finally, she wrote a book and released it. It was called The Silent Spring. And it revolutionized the thought of the day. She made no bones about how toxic DDT was, how bad it was, how it caused cancer and genetic disease, how it accumulated in the tissues of animals, how it killed fish and went up the food chain, killing insects and birds. And she made no bones about how if this continued, one day there would be no birds and spring 
would be silent. That's what a book was, the silent spring. Now when she released this book, there was a lot of controversy because this was a miracle compound, remember? <coughs> and there was a lot of pushback. Chemical companies had invested a lot of money into this and they did their best to, you know, uh, question her integrity. They did their best to question her sanity. But she prevailed because of how clear her arguments and her research was. And in the end, there was uh, the government, the US government created strict laws regulating the use of pesticides and the field of environmentalism was born. Rachel Carson is now known as the mother of the environmental movement. Now, to make no bones about something usually means, you know, persist going ahead and saying something clearly, especially when it's awkward or when it's unpleasant to do so. And Steve Jobs was known to be someone who made no bones about his feedback. I know a lot of his uh, your employees were dejected and some were very angry hearing his words. But he knew that if he made no bones about what he thought about the product, they would work hard and improve the product. And the product would go on to be more successful. Now, if you want to cultivate the skill of speaking out and uh, you know making no bones about something, there are two things you need to cultivate. One is a little bit of gumption, and two is good communication skills. Now, if you want to work on your communication skills, this stage is a great place to be. The Toastmasters movement was founded to help ordinary people like you and me become extraordinary speakers and communicators. Over here, you will learn not just how to be a good public speaker, but you will also gain leadership skills. And over the last 99 years, because Pastor Shashank talked about how it was founded in, 1924, and we have had 99 years of refining the whole process of teaching people how to speak in public, which means we have a lot of good practices, and one of them is how the meeting is organized and structured. So for the benefit of our guests, our typical Toastmasters meeting has three main sessions. One is the prepared speech session, where speakers practice their skill, uh, speeches beforehand and then come and deliver it on stage. The second is a table topic session, where speakers are called to speak here impromptu, so that they can learn to speak on their feet. And the third is an evaluation session, which helps you get feedback so you can improve the next time you're on stage. Now the evaluation session is conducted by a general evaluator. Our general evaluator today is DTM Vijayan. <coughs> They're keeping it a suspense. But he also has a tag team to assist him, which, is, which stands for Timer, Our Counter, and Dramedian. Our timer for today is Toastmaster Downer. When I spoke to him, he said that he has a mix of emotions and 
and analysis. And he's always trying to balance both. I asked him what movie he considered to be mind-blowing, and he said it was Primal Fear, which is something I just watched last month. Toastmaster Gautam, if you can introduce him. As the time of the day, it is my duty to time and record uh, the duration of the entire meeting and to notify the speakers and evaluators as they are nearing by the time. And for today's meeting, the speeches are five to seven <coughs> minutes. And at five minutes, I will hold up the green, six minutes, yellow card, and at seven minutes, red card. And for table topic speeches, it's one to two minutes. At one minute, I will hold up the green card. And at one and a half minute, yellow. And at two minutes, red card. And at the end of the meeting, I will notify and give my report to the general evaluator and submit it to the club secretary to become part of the records of the permanent meeting records. Thank you. Our art counter for today is Toastmaster Saloni, who is an entrepreneur whose brand supplies custom gifts. Now she recommends the movie Zindagi Na Milega Dobara. Toastmaster Saloni, if you can introduce your own. Good evening, everyone. So my mom recently called all of us for Diwali cleaning work. While I stood up saying, mm, ah, let me think about it, my sisters gave brilliant excuse and got away from the work. While obviously I was stuck up with the work. So I would just suggest all the speakers, please don't use such crutch words or uh, use long pauses so your speech is more effective. And I will uh, again give the report at the end of the meeting. And all the best speakers, do well. Master Puneet, who is a podcaster. He is the host of the Galata podcast. He tells me that one movie he recommends is Malena. Toastmaster Puneet, if you can introduce your role. It's a terribly hard to find movie. It took me three months to find it and another month to find the subtitles. But if you do, it will be a nice one to watch. Um, as a grammarian, I am the grammar Nazi of tonight. So apologies before I even start my role. My primary role is to make sure I have a keen ear to each and every sentence that you utter on the dais. Having said that, the word of today is candor, which means, like you said on the board, the quality of saying something directly, openly, and honestly. A good example would be the protesters today marched and shouted with candor, Kaveri Namdu. So that was open and honest. Um, another thing I would also point out as a grammar Nazi is to speak with gender neutrality in your mind. A good example would be instead of saying, ladies and gentlemen, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen, you can say, good evening, everyone. Thank you. prepared speech session. Our first speaker is being evaluated by someone who loves travel and adventure. He recommends the movie Bullet Train. Toastmaster Vishal, if you can read out the guidelines. Good evening, Toastmasters and dear guests. The speaker today is attempting the level one project two. The purpose of this project is to learn or review basic methods for writing a speech with a defined purpose and to present a well-organized speech on any, to any topic. All the best to the speaker. Thank you, Dr. Our first speaker for today is a software engineer by profession. Uh, so we all know he loves coding. But he also loves fitness and sports. 
He thinks all of us should re-watch or watch if you haven't already watched it. The movie The Dark Knight. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome Toastmaster Rahul on stage. Low vibrational energy 
we must we must remove uh, the reliance on external validation by becoming persistent in our own beliefs to remove unhealthy relationships with people that can exhaust us. Self-esteem is the core of our conscience, how much we truly believe in ourselves. It's based on our opinion and beliefs about ourselves. We might also think of this as self-confidence. Somewhere, uh, somewhere in the Renaissance period, the, Roman, uh, the Romans discovered stoicism, a uh, human virtue where people are allowed to become angry and selfish and go and uh, go and whatever they want uh, in a bad way. Many rulers came, they, they tried to make their mark, but in the end they achieved nothing because they didn't have any self-esteem, they didn't believe in who they are and what they could do. Mahmoud Ali once said, service to others is the rent you pay for your boon here or not. Be always and forever be a society growing with the mind. So let's learn to channel it correctly. The evolution made the mind, made emotions to remove guilt, shyness and judging unnecessarily. Positivity, positivity made the bond to remove vulnerability, anger and deterioration. Self-respect is the kernel of the human operating system. It's responsible for modulating all the clocks of vibration and energy of time along with the boredom of self-esteem. Steer your conscience in the right direction of time with strong and powerful emotions directed positively, positivity and uh, ever grinding self-respect. So, thank you. <laughs> I see that we have uh, reading about stoicism in common, so I'm happy to see that. Moving on, our second speaker for today is being evaluated by someone who enjoys traveling and has just completed a trip to Kedarnath and Madrina. He also loves sports related movies. He thinks we should all watch Chappe India if we haven't already. Can we have Toastmaster Jeevan read out the guidelines? So, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So, the purpose of this speech for the Toastmaster Sharma to present the speech and take evaluation from it. Timer, please move out. Time allotted for the speech is 5 to 7 minutes, and all the rest. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> now our next speaker also, any guesses? Loves to travel. Yes. She is a travel professional and she is also planning to start a travel related business. Now I know a lot of you have mentioned that you love to travel, so she has a lot of potential customers here already. She has been trying to read one book every week, which is very intense if any of you have tried. And she recommends that we all watch The Pursuit of Happiness. Please put your hands together to welcome Toastmaster Shelma. A speech title is Take It Easy. Never get busy making your life, but make it living. Good evening, my fellow Toastmasters, guests, and all gathered over here. Today, I'm going to introduce Seema. Do you all know Seema? Okay. So, Seema's life story I'm going to narrate here today. So, it is a remarkable one. Growing up in a village, hardly she had any influence in learning English or higher studies. But, her determination to become a very well-known personality in a corporate field, she came to Bangalore. In Bangalore, she hardly could speak a sentence. Then she met few friends and through her influence and also through her mentors, she decided she would win this part. And definitely she graduated with higher scores and completed her education in Bangalore. 
very soon with the same level of endurance she got into the corporate ladder and she had the same spirit of driving and getting her goal accomplished very soon she was got promoted into the higher ladder of the corporate field and soon she became the vp of the company everybody was so impressed with seema because her dedication and the work ethics was class apart she just fitted on to the career trajectory in very few years she marked the name in the corporate field and very soon she had her own team of 80 people all around and she was the boss and she was very very famous all over and she spent all her time motivating others with the seminars and she got out of new accounts into a kitty and she very soon traveled across the globe she had children back at home where she hardly spent any time with them she was busy working 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 all the time meanwhile her children grew up which she never realized she had very less memories which she had spent time with her children or her family because her dedication towards work was 100% when the time of retirement came when seema had to retire from a corporate world that's when she started going back and recollecting her life she realized hardly she has spent any time with her family she couldn't even get one single memory out of her family life but she had so many important events which she had listed in her corporate field but in her family life she had hardly few that was the time when seema realized who oh, she should have spent enough time with her family members she should have spent time with the children by then her children had already moved to abroad for their higher studies and they were almost settling there seema wanted to have a contact with them but geographical separation led her to not to contact with them all the time even they were committed to their work and over here seema was getting retired from her work last day of her work she decided to give a speech to the entire corporate team and she prepared a speech very well which resonated a life experience and she said to everyone the same you might have achieved great success in your career you would have got name fame and honor but if you don't have anything towards your family then that equilibrium that kind of satisfaction you would never gain so if you have to have that satisfaction in your work life balance you need to spend a quality time don't be like me not taking any leaves and lapsing all your leaves take leaves at times take it easy work would come and employee would always you know they find if you are not fit for the company they would replace but family is irreplaceable you cannot replace a family your work can be replaced by someone so whenever you feel like taking leave or you need to spend some time with your family take out some time spend enough quality time with them that is where you would have time to cherish so most of the corporate really seema left a legacy not just on a professional field but also with a motivating speech every single person in that workforce they realized family is also equally important work is important but your family is the one which would stay even after work even after retirement where you have to come back and say that is your family so all of you all just have heard about seema's life experience so as a corporate as a citizen we should also be responsible and let us all take life busy in this busy corporate work life culture we need to spend quality time way back at home and also give those positive vibes to everyone surrounded by thank you thank you to us master sharma for telling us such a relatable and thought provoking story
Moving on, our next speaker is being evaluated by a labor law consultant who describes himself as a happy-go-lucky person. And when I spoke to him, he was gushing over the movie Kantara. Can we have Toastmaster Joe Spall read out the guidelines? Hello, Toastmaster and dear guests. The purpose of this project is for the member to learn about different communication styles and identify her primary style and also share the impact of her style on others. Time of please note, it is five to seven minutes. Over to you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Toastmaster. Our next speaker is doing her BBA online and she loves yoga. In fact, she has completed her 300 TTC advanced training course in yoga. She told me that she's either very excited or very quiet, but I don't think I've seen her be very quiet because she brings so much energy. She loves reading and sitting with nature. And she thinks we should all go watch <coughs> Shawshank Redemption. Toastmasters and guests, please put your hands together to welcome Toastmaster Rashi on stage. Her key title is Communication Style. Toastmaster Rashi. If you just communicate, you can get by. But if you communicate skillfully, you can work miracles. Good evening, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and dear guests. <laughs> Good communication is not just having facts. It's about making those facts into something meaningful and ensuring that they truly connect with your audience. Good communication in today's world where communication is read, where information is readily available at the tip of our fingers, it is extremely important and a real skill to convert that knowledge into a message that people can grasp and appreciate. Now, to convey a thought, an idea, or a message in a much more effective and comprehensive manner, there are different styles of communication. So for today, I will be dividing my speech into three main parts. Part one, the four styles of communication. Part two, my predominant style. And part three, a style which I would want to explore. Part one, the four styles of communication. Direct communication. Direct communication is like giving precise driving instructions. So you must be precise while giving your instructions and you must um, you must be direct, you must be precise while giving your instructions so that the person can reach the destination without unnecessary details. You are then a clear and straightforward communicator. Second one. Supportive communication is akin to consoling a friend during their tough time. You are calm, an active listener, and patient while your friend is ranting around. You like providing them emotional support and words of encouragement to hype them up. Third, analytical communication. It's like solving a challenging puzzle. You meticulously examine each piece you analyze the patterns and logically piece together the solution. Here, you are a person of facts and figures and rely on logical thinking. Fourth, initiative communication. Now, initiative communication is basically organizing a spontaneous meeting. You plan, invite, and execute the event, demonstrating a go-getter you are enthusiastic, social, and persuasive. So these are basically the four styles of communication. Part two, my predominant style. During my 
teacher training course, we were divided into groups to complete our assignments as a group. Now here, as days passed, our group members bailed out on doing their work and actively participated and did not want to participate in group discussion. I observed and observed, thought over it, and stated with candor to my teammates that they had to add in their efforts and work as a group so that the work could be done in a more efficient and effective manner. At first, they resisted. They didn't really like the idea of working as a group, but rather wanted to work individually. But they soon came to the realization that we were all there to explore, to meet new people and socialize. And working as a group would just make things easier for us. We then became the most fun and interactive group there who always completed their assignments on time. Another incident that comes to my mind. There were two girls in our group. It was in the same scenario. So there were two girls in our group who were not very fluent in English and could not pace with the teachers and the concepts that were being taught. I decided to take the initiative and took time out to explain to them the concepts and break it into smaller chunks for them to understand. Now, I also provided them with my notes, with my notes so that it became easier for them to stay at pace with the teacher. As the results were announced, the two girls came back to me and told me that my teaching them or the understanding that I had given helped them score better and they also understood the concepts. This showed how dedicated I was to my work and my teammates. Now these, most of these occurrences helped me to believe that I'm more of a direct communicator who likes to cut to the chase without waffling around. I am the kind of person or appear to be the kind of person who is strong-willed and demanding because I am goal-oriented and ambitious about the things I want to do. Another style of communication that I observe is the supportive one, where I am calm, patient and like listening. I have told this many a times that I like listening to people more than talking about myself. So whenever my friends want to rant out or let their feelings out, I am there for them. I like making them feel understood and try to understand their feelings and where they come from. It helps me understand the different perspectives that come with it. Part 3. A style which I would want to explore. Any guesses? Initiative. Now, initiative style of communication. Why do I say this? The reason is that I am usually the kind of person or I do not have the nerve to approach someone and start a conversation with them. And that's why I appear to be an arrogant and selfish individual sometimes. However, that's not the case, guys. It's just that I have a low social battery and pure people when I see a lot of people. So, um, I, so instead of trying to confront my fears, I just sit alone and try avoiding conversations with people. Now, trust me when I say this that I am trying to change and when I walk through that door of Toastmasters, I remind myself that I have to approach people and be more passionate. That is why I'm trying to adapt to this style of communication and apply it in my everyday life. While I appear to be all jovial and enthusiastic here, I'm just another introvert with soul outside. So in the end, I would just like to remind all of you that there is nobody, that there is no particular style of communication or one style that a person uses, but it's just that you must use the style of communication according to the situation you are put in. And that's when you become an effective communicator.
where we use other styles as well. Now our final speaker for today is being evaluated by someone who is an engineer and works in the renewable industry. Like Toastmaster Rashi, he loves being with nature and he recommends the movie Avatar. Toastmaster Shom Shaker, can we have you read the guidelines? Judge a person by his appearance. A piece of coal is soft and black in color. But you apply intensity to it, it becomes hard and a shining lamp. Thank you, Chetra, for the introduction. Good evening, everyone present here. <laughs> Sometime back, Toastmaster George approached me and requested me to coach him as he had decided to appear for an interview for the post of senior lead engineer in Airbus. Before proceeding further, let me share something about Toastmaster George. He was born in Bhadravati, a small town in Karnataka. His father was an electrician, mother a school teacher. George was in Second year diploma. At that time, his mother fell seriously sick and thought of resigning as she was unable to work as a teacher. George, unfortunately, came in contact with several shady elements. They only helped him to flunk nine of the 12 subjects in the diploma course. When his mother came to know about it, she called him and said, I am sick, I wanted to resign, and you have failed. I appeal to you to concentrate on education. You are those friends. I have to continue my work because financial portion of the family is not. George seriously took the advice of his mother and concentrated on education. He appeared for the repeat examination. The result was he stood second for the state. He got an admission to the prestigious National Institute of Technology Suratkar for Metal Engineering. And there in the BA, he won a gold medal. There itself, he was selected for a postgraduate degree in Deakins University, University of Australia. After doing his postgraduate, 
He secured a job in Aerobus, came to Bangalore, joined this club, and chose me as a mentor. To continue with his coaching, we had a couple of discussions. And I finally, I came down to three aspects where he had to come to me. First, self-belief. He has to believe in himself. I shared with him my success story. In 1979, I was working as a of officer in high court. For the post of court officer, I was one of the candidates. There were more than 12 candidates, but only five posts were there. Chief Justice Hanaya was granted the interview, and when my turn came, I was asked. Chief Justice said, you are young. You have a long future to go. They are seniors. And some of you are going to retire shortly. I considered you on an education. I knew my faith. But I smiled at him and said, My Lord, you don't appoint me. But give me an opportunity to work for one day as a court officer in your court. I bet I'll, I'll defeat all these people. I'll prove that I'm the best one. If I don't succeed, I'm resigning this job. He was shocked. Looked at me. Then smiling, he said, go ahead, go ahead. On the next day morning, as I was settling to the compound of the high court, my colleagues were standing there at the gate and started clapping. I didn't know why they were clapping. I stopped my cycle and they told me, they congratulated me, saying, Chief Justice has created one more post and you have been appointed to that post. Self-belief. I convinced George to believe in himself. Second one. I asked him, who are the panelists? He said that the panelists are from London, senior officers, engineers of Air Force. Then I told him another story. It was 1980. I had appeared for the judicial master's post. I had done well in the written examination and I was third in the oral interview where we were in the queue. That time, one more person, an advocate was brought, and he was given a seat just ahead of me. He must have secured a few more marks than me. But he was wearing a red coat. I went up to him and told him, why are you wearing a red coat? We have to wear bra black dress. Judges will be wearing black dress. Why have to wear black dress? Sir, this is the best dress I have, sir. I don't want to wear black coat today because I wear that one every day while going to the court. Then he was ushered in. In no time he was out. And from his appearance, it was clear that something happened. His face and body language. After my interview, I went and asked him, what? He said, sir, chairman asked me only one question. After seeing my red coat, have you come for the judge's interview or to roam in the Kabam Park? <laughs> The high court is situated in the Kabam Park. I advise Suresh, you must wear the best suit because of the panels. If you don't have, it's just one. The last one was about PowerPoint presentation. He was given 10 minutes time to present PowerPoint presentation. Then I told him with my experience, what I learned here in Postmaster. PowerPoint presentations study well everything about the promotion and course. Have minimum number of uh, slides. Each slide should be white in background. For, uh, letters in black fonts. Each line should have more than there should be should not be more than six lines in a slide, and each line should not have more than six words. Can you say you know, study well? Have a fleeting glance, but never lose eyesight with the balance. You will succeed. Did Sura succeed? After his interview, he has not been coming to the club. <laughs> <laughs> but today, Suraj is flying high. He, has, he was promoted as a senior lead engineer, and today he is working in London in the Air Force.
speed uh, prepared speed session. And I know some of you are looking forward to the break. <laughs> uh, time off, can we give them five minutes uh, break? Okay, let's come back at seven Okay. Session for today is the table topic session. Now this session is being conducted by an IT professional in a company called Trelleborg. And he has done a few inspiring things in his life. He tells me that he tried bungee jumping once. But when he got to the platform and he looked down, he chickened out. I can relate to that. And you know why I have not tried bungee jumping? Because I knew I'd have this reaction. <laughs> but he more than made up for it by doing something very special this year. He ran 5K in the TCS marathon. Now I'm also trying to uh, train uh, run, in running and I know that at the end of this meeting I'm going to go ask him for tips. His movie suggestion has already been suggested by someone. Does anyone want to guess which movie it is? Pursuit of Happiness. No. Shark No. Rock. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, please put your hands together for our table topics master, Toastmaster Vishwanath. Thank you, Toastmaster Sahira. Uh, you made no bones by sharing the facts. <laughs> Both my facts. And uh, thank you for the and the introduction. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Are you all excited? Yes. Yes. Super excited. This is one important or probably one interesting session where we have an opportunity to improve our communication skills on the toes. And I'm saying on the toes, kind of an impromptu speech wherein a topic will be given to the members or the guests. In fact, this is one important session where yes, also you get an opportunity to talk on the stage and you have to think, probably organize your thoughts and then deliver a speech of one to two minutes as Toastmaster Gautam shared. So are you all excited? Yes. I think all the topics would be very simple and fun topics to share. It's all about your experience. Okay, let's get started. And at the same time, as I make sure that to use the theme and the word of the day, please kindly make sure to introduce or use your thoughts into our speech in terms of the word of the day and the theme as well. Okay, the first topic, so what I will do is, I will introduce the topic two times and then call the Toastmaster. The overall, probably I would say this is, uh, gives an opportunity for all the members, the audience who are sitting here to think, not to probably bring the Toastmaster or the guest right at the beginning. So I will introduce two times or relieve the topic two times and then call the speaker. Okay? What is the funniest thing that happens at your place? So this place can be anything. What is the funniest thing that happens at your place? Toastmaster Chirag. what happens at my place so uh, 
uh, before I start, I thought I'll give a movie recommendation. I think my favorite movie is uh, a movie directed by Quentin Tarantino, which is called uh, Inglorious Bastards. Mm -hmm. uh, Bastards spelled as B A S T E R D S. So, so it's, it's an awesome movie. So, the place where I have most fun is my college in my class. So, mm -hmm. there's this guy, there's this guy called, uh, yeah, like obviously, you know, there's Taran. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he's been hanging out with the uh, the boss there. So, so he's been hanging out with him a lot. And uh, the man is teaching him how to converse with girls. So, <laughs> Taran, I'm taking notes from Taran. Taran is taking notes from him. So, <laughs> so yeah, so uh, every day, or not every day, but at least every week. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Taran challenges himself and uh, goes and approaches some new girl uh, <laughs> does some interesting stuff. So <laughs> we try and take notes like we just uh, experiment on that and if it works for that we try it and do that. So that's a thing which we regularly do and uh, just uh, yeah I'm being candor about it. So, <laughs> so yeah that's where I have a lot of fun at these days. <laughs> for sharing your insights or rather your own personal story. <laughs> Let's move on. The second topic when words are both true and kind, they can change the world. When the words are both true and kind, they can change the world. Toastmaster Bhai. Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Now I had a very nice experience uh, when I was on site in Germany a few months ago. And uh, it was three months down the line and my hair had you know, grown wild. So I approached uh, one Baba who was uh, near my house. But the problem was this. I was in a foreign land where I was not speaking the language and in the barber shop were ladies who did not know how to speak English and I had to really explain what kind of haircut I wanted. Now I did the best I could with body language and other tricks that I learned here. But very unfortunately, the lady raised a tremor and the mark was seen. So I went to office next day, hoping that no one would notice. But very unfortunately, all my German counterparts noticed and asked me, where did I get a haircut? And uh, I explained as best as I could, again, trying to use all the tricks, but none of them worked and I got laughed at. So I went back to the barber shop. I uh, stood outside thinking whether I should go in and, you know, give the barber a piece of my mind. But then uh, I thought, let me try uh, differently because if it was in Karnataka, I would have you know, really done that. But then uh, I went in and I said, uh, <coughs> excuse me, so and so, this is the problem. Uh, very luckily, there was someone from Karnataka who spoke excellent German and really helped me out. <laughs> and uh, then the barber said, it's OK, uh, no worry, we'll fix it. And so the, the, the main barber there, he sat me down in this chair right at the center of the large barber shop and all the ladies looking, especially the one who you know, damaged my hair. And so he fixed it and I got a really good haircut. So I mean, truth and kindness really worked for me there and I hope it does for you also. So thank you. Thank you, thank you Toastmaster Abhay. I think I can uh, correlate uh, my uh, boss, actually he is from uh, Germany. Uh, her name is Natalie. And uh, every now and then, and weekly, at least 11 to 12 is our uh, weekly meeting. She will make sure that whatever she spoke, it's true, and have to, you have to just accept all the facts. And she will be so kind to assign the task also, you will be never be able to say no to it. Good communication. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on to the third topic. 
third topic is very simple. Pain is a teacher. Pain is a teacher. Toastmaster Srinivas.
people still don't get it. And the kids want something to do. <laughs> uh, uh, two days ago, they just said, the kids want something to do. You can get something. Ma says, no, keep it quiet. Says, no, okay. He goes to convince her, but then, no, no means no. That never goes to, that, that, that never changes. And even when your mother, sometimes when I need something and my dad again says no, and then Ma says yes, I go to her, Ma, I need to go to the cycling tour, which is like far away, and dad is not agreeing to it. Mom goes to dad's uh, room, and in simple words tells him he needs to go, dad says okay. <laughs> like, why doesn't that happen to me? Yeah, so simple words, profound, Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think everyone's parents here at everyone's house. Yeah, same story. Yeah, same story. I think in, if I would lay with my parents, no from always from my dad. Yes, even if it is tough or if it is simple, in either case. Morning till evening, my mom always says yes, let's do it. Okay, moving on to the next topic. I think it's a similar topic. Little things make big difference. Little things make big difference. Toastmaster Nagesh Rao. Though I would really love to do it, 
but uh, the impact of the person, like how he impacted, he or she impacted me or you know, uh, convinced me or just told me that how, can, how you can work towards this and you can really make it. And, uh, and actually, uh, to everybody's surprise, yes, this is a fact in my life that I actually went and did a bungee jumping of 32 meters in spite of ha being a happy ancestral patient. So, <laughs> yeah, so when somebody really convinces you or when they have, they make some point, there's nothing that can deter you from doing anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When I see <coughs> this topic, I recall again my boss only because they always say that it's nothing difficult, you can do it. It's important to do it. I might give you another one hour extra, I might give you another one day. But I'm sure you'll be able to complete it. So the next topic the cheapest is the most expensive. The cheapest is the most expensive. Toastmaster Saurabh. What happened that uh, I can say that uh, mother law, where I would say not keep it, whether I would say where we can get that, uh, we, we can all can get uh, without uh, any form. And <coughs> but I would say that that is most uh, valuable, oh, sorry, that is most valuable thing for our, you know, us in our life. So I can say that that is kind of a most expensive thing, uh, you know, which we can earn. So love is something uh, 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 which uh, we can see, which we can get, uh, you know, uh, uh, without uh, spending any money. But uh, <coughs> if we get it, uh, that can become uh, you know, very valuable for us. Moving on to the next topic, cheese, wine and friends must be old to be good. <laughs> cheese, wine and friends must be old to be good. Toastmaster Ratan Shetty. Of one friend of 
my who, whom I know from college, and I'm sure you would have such friends as well who you know from from ages, maybe since the time you were a kid. And uh, over a period of time, it's it's just the presence of the friend, and that says so much. You don't even need, need to speak. I remember when I go across to this friend's place at Bodhipuri, uh, Mumbai. I just sit with him for an hour and. We probably speak very less, but we exchange so much during that time. So cheese, wine, friends, and many other things. Uh, you know, right in your age, and you enjoy the moment. Thank you, Master, for sharing, and uh, especially for this topic, I would like to share one of my close friends, uh, Ravi. And right from childhood till date, I can say that uh, we have a constant. We keep calling up or often we meet once in a while. And uh, even that short conversation of two minutes will be more insightful, and we get more details. Or rather, I get more clarification, or I can share more thoughts with the friend. So it's always good to have because easy to connect. Okay. Moving on to the next topic, this is <coughs> more with respect to the physical part, so you can take it up. Those who don't jump or in <coughs> Those who don't jump will never fly. Those who don't jump will never fly. Those must fly people.
someone who is a corporate trainer and his focus is on experiential and game based learning i can relate a little bit to him because he relies so heavily on autocorrect that he forgot the spelling of psychology <laughs> <laughs> i know he is uh, you know sometimes very stern looking and a little intimidating because he's very tall so but when he comes you here on stage he puts you at ease with his humor and his wit he loves reading and when i asked him about a movie recommendation he gave me a book recommendation he said i would recommend the power of your subconscious mind he is also my mentor and i know i will be learning a lot from his feedback over here as will you all when uh, you hear what he has to say about your time on stage friends please put your hands together for dtm vijay anand
the, the client's, uh, I think it's your, your boss, right? He said, you want to go to jail? And this is Kabul Mahal or Lal Jaws. So if I was not the president, not to use all of us, you could perhaps pause before saying the word jail and drop your voice. It was a matter of concern. It's not that everybody would like to go to jail and spend a couple of hours there. And the boss said, you will succumb to the demands. As if it's motivation speech. One more idea, any type, because voice modulation is not easy. Any pain point which is not desired to write the content, drop the voice. So if I was in your manager's place, if I have called your place, I mention, right? Friends, be careful, Prashant. Otherwise, you might succumb to the demands. Okay. Um, I like the way we link those passages to the way of speech. I think it was very well, the transcript was so smooth, very well. And the best part, friends, what's in it for me? What's in it for us? Your story. And how, how does it apply to us? I think that's very important as a speaker, more so as the president, because your speech is more inspirational in nature. So I like the way you said how it applied to us. This is, I know, a very good intro of the Toastmaster Day. So, friends, what do you give? I'll see you. <laughs> I love your preparation, Tiger. I think a good, about a week ago, you sent me that message asking for the intro, I'm sure, for the other speakers and all the role takers, right? Great job done. I like your introduction of all, every role taker, just not the speaker, the tag team. Excellent job done, now, Tiger. I'll come back to you in a moment. Let's hear from my evaluators. Okay. Uh, the first speech was evaluated by Toastmaster Vishal. He's right there. Give me a round of applause for Vishal, please. Good evening, Toastmasters and dear guests, and Rahul in particular. Your candor on stage was admirable, Toastmaster Rahul. Congratulations on giving a really good speech. What I found really attractive about your speech was it was well researched. All your topics had good backing and your work, background work that you did, it really showed. And you had a personal story that really connects to, every, uh, to people because people want to hear about you. Next, you had a few good quotes and a lot of uh, you know, uh, references to scientists and athletes, which was nice. And uh, you used very little crutch words, which I found really, really good. Coming to a point of suggestions, I would, your speech had all the right ingredients, maybe just restructure it. What do I mean by this? For example, you could have opened the speech with, as humans, we all want to achieve something, uh, something that is in our biology. Instead of that, you came to directly address the audience. Maybe you could have addressed the audience after giving this sentence. Next, I believe that you did not give enough eye contact. There was no point in the speech where I saw you look up, and that is something that you can work on for the next speech. Next one, you could have used pauses to emphasize certain state of points in your speech. For example, uh, when you ask a question, do you know what Albert Einstein and Richard Feynman had in common? This is where the pauses were really, really important. You could have asked the audience, do you know what Einstein and Richard Feynman had in common or, and waited for an audience to respond? Or you could have answered it yourself, like, do you know what Albert Einstein and Richard Feynman had in common? Was it intelligence? Was it IQ? Was it physics? And then you could have answered curiosity. And I found it uh, that, that your speech was a little fast, and it, uh, I found it hard to follow it. But apart from that, it was a really good speech. You had all the right ingredients, the structure was there, and the conclusion could have been improved by emphasizing on it, and then in the end, telling that you are handing over to the Toastmaster of the day. Apart from that, it was a well structured of the speech, and the purpose of the project was met. Thank you, and over to you, General Harvey. Okay. 
three objectives. I'm going to talk about the evaluation. Three objectives. One, you very clearly mentioned in the result about the purpose of the speech being very excellent. Perhaps the other two were in your place. The first one, basic methods to write a speech. If I were in your place, I would have the speaker. As we write a speech, let it be more for the ear and more it was a bit, uh, you know, very wordy, where it's more conversational and easier for us to follow. And the other one, the organization bit. We threw some light on the ending of the speech, but perhaps how the speech begun and the body of the speech that you have thrown some light. Two objectives. Okay. Moving on, the second uh, speech, which was evaluated by Toastmaster Jeevan. <laughs> Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please mm -hmm. raise your left hand if you are a working professional. Thank you. Please raise your right hand if you, are, if you have a family and family. Huh? Yeah. Toastmaster Sharma, you have written a script which has got aligned with perfect audience because everyone got connected with your content. As your visa officer, a strict visa officer, I will be evaluating your speech in accordance with schema. S for stay hungry, stay foolish. Your speech had a message. Audience, you need to have a dream in your life. And you got connected with SEMA. A girl who had a goal to become a corporate professional how she achieved by connecting to the right person. Kudos to that. Hi. Impressive body language. The steps you were taking on the stage was perfect aligned with your thoughts, with your message, with perfect eye contact on the audience, which gave enough confidence for you to grab the audience attention. M message. One Seema, after her long profession, realized she didn't have enough memories to cheer. Later, to avoid this kind of circumstances with other colleagues, she wrote a script and delivered a speech in front of the other audience. Colleagues, if employee doesn't fit for organization, we can replace. But we can't replace our family members. Creating memories with families are important. So take it easy. Take it easy. Is it so, audience? Yes. A. Active listening. Active vocal variety. Where you can improvise it. In your speech, you had enough message. But lack of interactions with the audience. At the end of the message, you have given up question to the audience, is it so audience that could have had impacted more? One. And number two, in that message, throughout your speech, the vocal variety was in the same length. Trust me, at certain point you need to raise your vocal voice to bring more impact to your speech. At certain point, you need to come it down. So know that well in advance where to stretch your voice, mark it in a color, so that you will bring out the same experience in the audience. With that, as your visa officer, I will be certifying your L1 P4 Part 1 script and wish you all the best for the part of it. Your acronym, Seema, how was it spelled in the speech? Double E. I just please forgive me, my point is I miss it. Uh, Jeevan, you use one E or two E in the Seema? Yes, I can. Oh, I see. <laughs> Seema or Seema? <laughs> right, so as an evaluator, let's ensure we are on the same page as the speaker with the acronym spelling. Uh, good job done. I love the way the use of the acronym, it seems to me that we're using the acronyms a lot. I've seen many evaluators while they read out the guidelines. They tend to mention about the speaker. And in those much as I to ask you the guidelines. Ask them, Jeevan, pull the flag, what so it said, and said, and Shelma, the next speaker. Chaitra lost Jeevan. <laughs> <laughs> so, on our recommendation to the evaluator, please refrain from mentioning the speaker's name. It's their 
maybe they're probably. But also that they're building up an element of suspense in this tree. It's a kind of killjoy bit plan. Let's avoid that kind of entirely. Moving on to the third speech, which is validated by Josh, who comes with full of Josh. Let's try to avoid Josh. General evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, and dear guests. We all come here to learn about communication. Today is actually a double bonanza day because generally we have communication, we learn by practically, learning by doing. Today we had something like a theoretical class, uh, presentation rather. Now let's get into what I liked about the presentation, what I thought the speaker could have done better. Number one, I like the general flow of her presentation. Now she started with the importance of communication, the four styles of communication, her predominant style, the impact of her style on others, and how she was trying to explore the other styles of communication, and with the call for action. I think uh, that was very easy to understand and assimilate. So that was very well done. I like that very much. The second one was she clearly stated the flow of her presentation. That is the four styles of presentation, the predominant style, and the impact of her style on others. Now, what did this reflect? It says that it's exactly in line with the purpose of the project, because she had to, first of all, identify her predominant style and how it impacts others. So she was very much in line with the purpose of the project. Second one. This itself is a characteristic of a direct communicator, a style she identi identify herself with, herself with. So it re really reinforced her style of communication. I think uh, it really bought that aspect of it very well. Now, a third one. She described some scenarios to explain her communication <coughs> style. And as a college student, I think uh, it is very natural that she used that scenario and uh, it really helped us to understand better. Now, what she could have done better, I felt Speaker Rashi, Toastmaster Rashi, I think you narrated uh, the as aspects that about a direct communication style, you identify yourself. But the scenarios that you explained, I think had equal measure of supportive communicating uh, style also. So while direct communicators are task oriented and quick to make a decision properly, that influenced you to identify yourself with a direct communicator. Supporting style also has encouraging or bringing about a consensus in a group. So that aspect was clearly there in the scenarios that you explained. So how you could have bought this, balanced this, I felt was by a single role play, which was a little more elaborate, where you could have a representation of the characters and that you could have identified the aspects of direct communication and the supportive uh, style of communi uh, communication also. That would have brought this out very well. So that would have made it also more interesting and uh, that's what I have to offer. So I think uh, you've done well, but keeping these points in mind, I think it would have uh, enhanced the value for this. Thank you. Both. Project uh, which Postmaster Jeevan Dalia did. The guy was present a speech and receive a feedback, which is accomplished, yes. The speaker received a feedback. And the third speech objective were different communication styles, her particular style, and also the impact on others, which all three were covered by Joe's. Well done. Just one suggestion. Now we know we say the good thing, right? Yeah. Uh, Rashi, <coughs> excellent. We spoke about the four communication styles. We spoke about your style and the impact. Great job. But, what's the mistake that is? The word? Beauty. Because it is contradictory. We are lifting the third. First a good point, fifth floor. Second good point, tenth floor. Third good point, fifteenth floor. But, minus one of basement, or minus two, or ground floor. So, the transition of what they did well, and where they could focus, we could use and. I used to say, however, having said that, all you and is even better. It sounds better, it flows better. One small suggestion for all the candidates. Moving on to the fourth speech, which is edited by Tobus's Postmaster Sober Shaker. Round of applause, please. Thank you very much, fellow Toastmasters. I'm 
Mr. Robinson Disoza here's my personal opinion on you know, what I felt about the speech. Let's look at the basics as per the manual. There are some you know, very basic, like how the speech is to be structured. It was just perfect. A great opening for the speech and the conclusion I thought was very dramatic at the end. So that is just perfect. And then it talks about clarity. Again, it was simply super. I think you did not use any complex word. So some of the speakers I see that they really uh, you know, use those great words from the dictionary, but you use very simple words. Yet, it was very effective, is what I would say. Vocal variety, excellent. I'd say that the emotions you expressed was really to the vocal variety. That came out very well and it's a great learning for all of us. Third, gestures. Initially, I thought, okay, you're just simply you know, holding your hands like this. Then came the Ambedkar, uh, you know, gesture, I would call it as. So what I mean to say is, you know, you really played around your arms very well. But it was not really monotonous, so it was perfect as well. All right? So then the comfort level, I think I did not talk about that. The comfort level, especially, you were very confident. Now let us come to the, the objective of the speech. The purpose was to share your experience. Now we all know that you are a great mentor and coach. There are hundreds of Toastmasters who have been mentored by you and also coached by you. So there's no doubt on that, but I was keen on to listen to you, your experience with uh, George. Right? <coughs> you narrated three stories, which by itself are, or actually I felt that it was very inspirational. You spoke okay, about self-belief, the way to dress, which you always do, right? So you are an example for that. So the stories were uh, really awesome, I would say. An area where I thought you could, uh, you know, it's not really improvement, but it was actually more uh, what the audience was looking for, actually, as an experience. You gave the introduction of George, which I felt it took more than like, one minute. So I felt that was not needed. We were not here to really, you know, uh, we were not really looking for this needed this introduction, but maybe I felt it could have actually been uh, reduced. Then, initially, after we came to the election, uh, you told our uh, MCA, thank you for the introduction. I feel as a speaker, we need not have to thank them, is again uh, what I felt uh, personally. Um, <coughs> then the, the last one, or actually, no, there's one more before that. So, the person whom he has coached was George, right? At the end, you said Suraj. So, the person next to me was asking, who's this Suraj? I think his name is George Suraj. Maybe, you know, you can use the, the same name at uh, both the places. And, uh, yeah, that, that is it. I think my time is up too. It was a great speech. We really loved it. The part which I felt was missing was, you know, you had three of your stories. Probably one story could have been cut off and probably could have actually told what George felt during the entire process. This is what I personally uh, love to hear. Over to you, Angela. I think I bring the bell. There's a following. Okay, I bring the bell. Okay. The fourth uh, speech model was share coaching experience, fulfill. Second main objective, develop and apply skills for coaching. So much. I don't know if they have to start a school some light on that group to speak up. Main skills of coaching friends. First is the coach must develop a rapport, rapport with the coaching, rapport building. Second, assure confidentiality with the coaching. Second, third thing, assess what goals the coaching wants to achieve. To achieve goals, those goals currently where they are and where they want to be. And go from point A to point B, what are the skills required? Those are the typical coaching skills that are required. Crucial second objective, perhaps we will put some light on that. Let us give a good applause to all the four delegates and all the four speakers. <laughs> Coming back to our those one day, those one said, a lovely preparation like I mentioned earlier. Uh, and uh, when I think uh, Stratton was introducing you, you love the environment that one day I can come with you. I can't be as well as you, but I love the environment and we spoke about Rachel Carson about being very activist and the perils of uh, that tongue twister. 
a very, uh, very complicated word which my friend applied very nicely. He asked, he asked what, is, what it is? He said, DDT. Very nice. And uh, then from there, from Rachel Carson, he went on to Steve Jobs. Right? So I was wondering whether Steve Jobs makes Apple phones generally quite friendly. That was lost for a moment. So I think Steve Jobs was regarding the motivation communication bit, right? So perhaps I missed out there. So whether such kind of transition we are linking to those smarter. Perhaps it was implicit, perhaps it was implied. If I was in your place, explicit, without missing words loud and clear. Now friends, not only the environment, the environment of those masters, how we grow, and one such person every home, Steve Jobs, something like those lines. An explicit transition it was kind of lost over there. Right. Second thing, um, the G is so and so, mention my name. I use the data. <laughs> I put up so much of it, right? Then she said, okay, get on man. I use the data. Right away, etc. What we can do, I can say that all the data. So thanks for the reminder. <laughs> we are in trouble if I don't go. One of the twins is already exposed to me. And the young man, the reminder. So perhaps so, okay, keeping in interaction, keep it to the end. <laughs> don't don't blame him. He's a twin, absolute twin. That's one of his phone and that's twin brother. So then the tag team, I was also doing for the first time. So you forgot the cars came up here. He's one minute man, no worries, he came up over here. Our friend Saloni doing for the first time. And uh, he said, I'm not one of the cars. My last home is coming up next. Then our friend Puni stepped in, he lifted the cars. That's the beauty of Toastmasters. So as a Toastmasters today, perhaps we could just ensure that our tag team, they're all on the same page. Um, Without wasting for the time, let us hear it from our tag team. I'm going to go in the reverse order. This is not TAG, today it's GAG. <laughs> let's invite the Gremlin for his report. <laughs> Bangalore. 
that sounds better. There are a few aspects that I think we miss out when we convert from a mother tongue to English, like very, very famous, working, working, working all the time. Uh, it, it's like swalpa swalpa, little, little. So it, it becomes like a double comparison. So you're better off just using it once. Avoid using basically. Skip it because I don't think it makes sense. You know, throughout the evening, none of the times basically was a value wag in your speech. I think uh, another point, if you have a jargon, like uh, Robinson sir had, stenograph. I almost missed it. I heard that speech before, so I picked it up. But for the rest of the point, so whenever we use a jargon that doesn't appeal to the audience, establish the jargon. Okay. I like he did later on. He mentioned uh, where the high court is. He established the location of the high court by saying it's next to the coming park. So if you want to use a jargon, always establish it by a line of them. I still don't know what a stenograph does. So next time, probably. Some really good usages I want to end with is stream of experiences. I think that was a good usage. Own the stage, double bonanza. Um, Enhance the value in accordance with SEMA. I really like these words. Profound impact. These are nice objectives that really underline the word after it. With that, um, there's more in it. If you want, please refer to it. Now back to the general evaluator. Let's invite the art counter to Master Sabani.
But otherwise, the job well done. Let's give them those parts of the for a lovely job. On this note, I hand over, before I hand over to the Gosma Chaitra, yes, I made no bones about it. I didn't want to break your bones. I was just going to simply be very honest as a generalizer. On that note, it's back to Toastmaster. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Thank you, Mr. I know a lot of us, uh, you know, we all learned a lot from this session. Can we all have another round of applause for the GE, the director, and the captain? We all have a long weekend coming up, and I know everyone's looking forward to it. And I had an ulterior motive when I asked for movie recommendations. <laughs> I know it's obvious now. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are planning to watch movies during the weekend, you have your list right over here. With this, thank you for being such a great audience. I love being here on stage and seeing all of you smile over here. We had a wonderful meeting. And with this, I'm going to call our president, Toastmaster Shashank. Thank you, Toastmaster Chaitra. While you take time to vote, cast your votes, I have quick announcements to make. The first one is regarding the evaluation and table topic contest. Second, just a reminder for all of you to nominate by 3rd of October. Our contest chair, Toastmaster Hannah Victoria, will share the link again. 3rd of October is the last day to nominate yourself for the contest, both evaluation and PD contest. It will be held on the 13th of October. Second is regarding the membership renewal. Most of you have made the membership renewals for the term of October to March. There are a few who have specifically mentioned that they are not in town or not be in town. Just a reminder for others. Tomorrow is the last day, so please make the payment by today. We are also commencing the next speech craft session by the end of October. More details will be shared by next week. This is for the guests. Now for the members, we are also looking out for speech craft coordinators. In case you are interested to be a coordinator, please reach out to Toastmaster Jos Paul, our VP membership. He will talk about the requirements and uh, other eligibility criteria, then the committee will take a call on the Bluetooth coordinator will be. With that, let us move to the awards for this week. The best auxiliary role taker is our Grammarian Toastmaster Puneet Suran.
have a long packing in the head. I enjoy meeting number 1396 of Bangalore's master's club.